as a civilization, we've obviously we've obviously had a had a great run. Uh, we've done very well. We had the industrial revolution. Uh, we survived that. Uh, we've built a lot of modern uh, military technology. We've survived that uh, so far. We built a banking system, um, <laughs> and, and we're still struggling with that part of it. But but you know we've had a good run. I think if the people knew what the banking system is up to, uh, as Henry Ford said, there would be a revolution tomorrow morning. Uh, the fact is most people think that what a bank does is lend you money that someone else has put in the bank previously. Um, but what a bank actually does, what a commercial bank does, uh, is to create money from nothing and then lend it to you at interest. If I do that, if I manufacture money in my own home, it's called counterfeiting. Uh, if an accountant creates money out of nothing in the company accounts, it's called cooking the books. But if a bank does it, it's perfectly legal. Uh, and so long as you allow fraud to be legalized, uh, then all kinds of problems are going to pop up in the economic system, which you can't do anything about. Private banks create money out of nothing and lend it at interest. Now, that sounds absurd. Uh, when I teach sophomores, you know, about money and banking and how banks, they never believe it. And so you have to go through it again and again. Yes, banks really do create money. They really do. Here's how it happens. And it's absurd. And they're right to, to uh, doubt that that could possibly be what's really going on. But it is. Now, if the banking lobby is very strong, they're going to say, well, we don't want to change the system. We're making so much money out of it. What we have to do is... A, try and convince the people that it's their fault, um, that their wage claims are too high and that's why we're having lots of inflation or people are speculating on housing and that's why house prices are going up. What they're not going to say is that this is happening because banks are creating money out of nothing and pumping it into the system and that's why prices are going up. But how is it that we've ended up with a system in which banks have the power to create money? Since 1971, when President Nixon took the United States off what was left of the gold standard, the world has operated under a system of money known as fiat. The dollar, the pound, the euro are all government fiat currencies. Fiat is a Latin word meaning let it be so. It is the law that this government currency be money. Indeed, without that legal enforcement and the fact that we must pay taxes with this money, that dollar bill or that computer digit that represents a dollar would be pretty much meaningless. Only the government has the power to issue fiat money, but banks can create it through lending. Over the last 40 years since this system of fiat money became the global norm, the supply of money has grown exponentially in fact, we've seen the greatest growth in the supply of money in history. But who benefits? Of course, those that have the power to issue money, governments and banks. Then, those companies and individuals that get this money early. They can spend it before the prices of the things they want to buy have risen to reflect the new money in circulation. In other words, they get services, products or assets cheap but prices soon rise, so holders of assets such as houses or shares will then see gains without there necessarily being any improvements to the company or house in question. Often this can lead to speculative bubbles. But what about those at the bottom of the pyramid? Those on fixed wages or incomes? Those who live in remote areas? Or those with savings? By the time this newly created money has filtered down to them, the prices of the things they want to buy have increased. Their savings buy them less, however, and their wages remain largely unchanged. In some cases, they have to take on debt just to be able to afford the things they were previously able to buy, which means they have to go back to the banks. In reality, this process of creating money only redistributes wealth from the bottom to the top of the pyramid and thus that ever-increasing gulf between rich and poor gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Of the money in the world today, 97% of it is debt. The French philosopher Voltaire once said, all paper money eventually returns to its intrinsic value, zero.